Braxton. <laughs> this is going to be good. Oh, my God. So, it's, uh, you know, usually when somebody has a birthday, you notice, and I usually do, you know, I've had a couple of things to do today. And then usually, you know, at noon, somebody's not drunk on their birthday. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I guess they could be. And then you got to think the time zone kicks in, especially for where we do our show. And you forget that since the time zone kicks in, it's actually eight o'clock. So I'd probably be three sheets to the wind if it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give everybody a heads up, if you can't hear the fuck stick growling already and giggling his little ass off. Get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> Get on with it. And we're going to have a hell of an episode today. It's oh, yeah. Oh, like, damn. We, we may Get have him another. Drunk. Oh, he's got another one already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we may have a drunk panelist today. Before we do anything one. else, I guess we've <laughs> got to get this out the way. Because if we don't, oh, he just shotgunned a beer too. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh, I know. Happy oh, birthday to Benny sick. Shakes! Oh, happy birthday! <laughs> How, Boy, yeah. How old are I you today, Sugar this. Tits? I am 22 still. <laughs> 22? Got no, your answer. I, I'm 38, I think. What so year were you born in, Benny? 1983. Yeah, you're 38, buddy. That's yeah, exactly. you're 38. That's great. Yeah, That's my... Fair. My wife has already said, when I hit 40, we're going to have a big orgasm. Awesome. Penny's <laughs> we're going to see what we get out of Penny today. This should be interesting. I'm expecting the bare minimum. It seems like I'll be muting Benny today at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> I can I can already tell we're gonna have a day of firsts on dating with disabilities. I can tell that's how this is going. Anyways, I'm your host with the most. I've had three cup of coffee and three shits already. The GI track is in full motion. <laughs> Let me tell you, the coffee and the Crohn's have kicked in. <laughs> but. <laughs> That wasn't that funny. Fuck you, Jane. Drew. <laughs> anyway, this is the show. The uh, it's crazy. Like I don't know if you know, and this is the first time. We'll, fuck, Benny's having another beer. I don't know if he, he might oh, pass no. out during the show. Anyways, this is like a bad episode of Hollywood Squares because there's like shit going on everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's look. He's already passed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we lost what a are we doing this week? Uh, you'll get there in a minute. And, All and right. I, we're okay. already live, Benny. You don't know this. Is going to <laughs> I just get on with the it. Already. That's the best part. Is he's just like this. Yeah, let's do this. Is that we were already doing it. Fuck stick, right? But <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's give it up for everybody. We had the birthday boy first. He took off the headphones so he won't get made fun of. But there's Benny Shakes. He's got, oh, he's so yeah. he's got the octopusy, also known as Odyssey. We've got, who else we've got in here? We've got a variety. Dude, right? Hey. Videos are. We've got... Well, there they are, looking like fucking yeah, Stevie yeah. Wonder today, right? <laughs> oh, God, they, they disappeared on me. Their video's going in, it's going out, right? And then we've got Blue Glasses Girl. <laughs> we've got the chick who can't figure out the fucking sound effects. We've got the potato chips. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. And then, of course, it's your host with the most, the foul mouth from the south. 
I'm not from the South. That doesn't rhyme. <laughs> I'm the prick with the big chick razor. Hey, anyways, uh, my name's <laughs> Man Productions here. Uh, we got two topics. <laughs> the first topic, um, should we go sad or should we go sexy? Which one should we go first, you guys? Sad sex. Awesome. Oh. Benny, Benny's the birthday, the birthday boy. He boy gets his first. Get on with this time. Sad vibes. He's hacking tonight, even. That's the creep. Well, that way we can finish the show with sexy vibes. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, we're getting. It's called money. finishing strong. <laughs> Because I want to be gone by nine o'clock. So what we're at. Today, All right. So Benny's first... on a time schedule. Who? <laughs> Benny? Shit, if he lasts five minutes, that'll be a record. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Got it. I'll be gone. Benny, Benny, on nine no heckling, Benny. Mind your business. So we got two topics today. Our two first topic of the day is something that nobody really likes to talk about. I guess it happens for everybody, but it's about being lonely or choosing. To be- <laughs> and the reason why we chose this topic is because let's be honest, having disabilities is not the only way to be alone, but having disabilities may- definitely makes it harder because a lot of times it may not be by choice. A lot of times it may not be by cognitive choice or physical choice, right? And I don't think we really think about some of those things. And even in short conversations with people of late, I've been able to talk to them about a couple of things and see how they feel. But before we do that, so I can get the show buzzing, we always like to have a topic. And I fucked up the topic this morning. It was way too heavy, right? So this time I've got a better topic. What was your favorite Paralympic athlete this year. And if you fuckers don't know, you're assholes because we're disabled. We should be supporting the disabled Olympics as much as the regular Olympics. We're only Googling Paralympics now. I don't support the Olympics or either. I just don't watch it because I don't. I don't. I know who I want, who I supported and I'm sorry, America. We won the rugby. Yeah. <laughs> Are you talking rugby. the regular rugby? Awesome. Paralympics rugby. I'm talking about the <laughs> rough fucking rugby. Are you pussy? We're talking about the- rugby. He's drunk. He's drunk. I'll give it to him. He can have it. Come on. You, you guys normally win. The wheelchair rugby. Where they oh, shoot. Fuck. He's not we joking. Won. Oh shit, we just won. got real. Yeah. I just got heckled. Sports. I just looked at the it's score. Like oh sports. fuck. They won their first Olympic medal in wheelchair rugby. Go ahead. Speak yes. your score. Go ahead, yes, I mean, even the real England Americans. No. The real English rugby haven't won in fucking six years. It takes a bunch of cripples to win gold. I knew he was going to say that. Come on, man, get a I know... I know you Americans normally win the wheelchair rugby, but we are bad. We are bad. So, yeah, (laughs) you've got three years to get better again. England. What should I say? Great Britain. Great Britain. I was just watching the football earlier. That doesn't, like, there's a whole side of me that's like, that doesn't sound threatening. <laughs> it's not threatening. Sorry, it does sound threatening. 
I'm just supposed to sound threatening, like England, and you're like England. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, do you want the better half, mate? Come on, this show, Uh-oh. because I don't think I'm good enough tonight. And he sounds like, like the non-threatening what? pirate. Does that <laughs> mean the wifey gets to come on? Yeah, do you want the wifey instead? Uh oh, who's the wifey? <laughs> No. Mark. Oh, no. You're yeah. good. It's your birthday, no. so we're good. We're good. So Sorry, I won't drink anymore. There we go. That'll <laughs> work as he picks up the can. So, anybody else got a favorite Paralympic while I get this going? I got one. But not but not this year's. Mine is Adair pain. He's my number one champion. Why is that? <laughs> Anybody ever tell you you look like Lewis Hamilton's little sister, Variety D? Well, thank you, because even though my head has been cut yet, my hair is here, by the way. It's I don't think something. anybody else other than me knows who Lewis Hamilton is, do they? No. How can you not know? That's, a, that's a light skin brother who drives a car. Great car. Yeah. That went all over the place. What did you say? <laughs> What did you, you say, Emma? He's got what? Wasn't he married to a pussycat doll? He oh, was. Pussy, but before the pussycat, he is a lightning brother. <laughs> you ride the car. Apple cheese bits are in the air. That's the reason. Yeah. 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 Y
as far as the relationship stuff goes. But I think the alone loneliness part that I would say was was big for me and probably a lot of people with disabilities is losing your parents or your family members. Because being somebody with disabilities, a lot of it takes a lot of understanding a lot of times for people to deal with you. Not just deal with you, but be able to handle you and some of your disabilities and your nuances and your quirks, right? And so when you lose the family members, the moms, the dads, the sisters, the cousins, the grandmas, you lose people who have a understanding of you. You lose the people that you don't have to explain who you are, what you are, and why you are. Because they've been there. And so the biggest part for me that's probably lonely is I don't have anybody who's known me my whole life anymore. And there's a lot of explaining that comes with that. There's a lot of, and it's not so much explaining. There's a lot of trust to open up and tell people your story, to tell people your trauma and to express that pain and go through that emotion. God damn it. I'm about to cry again. Fuck you guys. Um, (laughs) You know what I mean? You got me. (laughs) Yeah, you guys are assholes. But <laughs> it's it takes a lot to um, want to talk through a lot of that shit. See, I'm thinking of all that shit. That's why I'm crying. And you don't want to like you don't like. Fuck! I think I've, exp- I've I was molested as a kid, right? And I was homeless as a kid, and I was I I got left to live with people who weren't my parents as a kid, and um, that fucks with you, right? And then not just that, that fuck with you, but um, I've told the people, everybody in the world, I haven't talked to anybody on this podcast or had a real conversation about this with anybody in my life, right? But to you don't have that understanding from somebody without crying through it and talking through it and experiencing it. That takes trust. And when you have issues like our guest earlier who's been misdiagnosed or not diagnosed and you've gone through those struggles for eight or nine or ten years of your life and then you have to meet somebody new and tell them you're sick but you're not diagnosed sick and they don't believe you or you don't do this or hey I'm deaf but you hear this and you don't hear that that's the part of loneliness and being alone that having disabilities gives you um, and I'll end on this piece I, I took one of my favorite artists to work with and comedians is Deborah Wooten who has, um, she calls herself the polio because she's got polio. <laughs> <laughs> and the polio is a disease where the mind forgets what it can do. And not so much the mind does, but the body doesn't get the signal. So basically, it's like me and Variety D's filter. Our brain says, don't cuss, be a good little person. And our mouse says, bitch, please, motherfucker, this is how I feel. <laughs> yes. And basically, Deborah Bonner yes. says, I'm going to walk. And her body goes, yeah, I don't remember how to do that this day. And so when we went on a road trip, I had to move, take her chair out, like, everywhere we went. And I didn't complain. It wasn't, it wasn't an issue for me. But there are people that just don't want to deal with that. There are producers who don't want to deal with that. There are people, you know. And so... One of the things she told me is it was great to have somebody who would take her on the road and do those things for her without complaining, without it being a second guess. But there are so many people who won't. And they don't tell you or they, you, don't, you'll never know, but you know it. And so I think those are the ways of being lonely and loneliness that we don't think about in the dating world. And even me, I've admitted that I couldn't see myself dating a woman in a wheelchair. I don't know how I could do that. Like, I don't. It'd take a lot of balls. She'd probably have to hit on me. I wouldn't feel right hitting on her, right? So these are just things to think about when we think about being out there. And it doesn't even have to be dating. Just say hi to the motherfucker with one leg. He's been hopping all day. The motherfucker's tired. Just say, hey, how you doing? Lean on me. Something, I don't know. <laughs> That's one way. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's fucked up. But I uh, went from crying to laughing. As usual, we're back to laughing. Only two tears. <laughs> oh, huge. Anyways, birthday boys in the dark. I'll let him calm down. I muted him for a while. Hey, so we're going to go to the other foul mouth fucker on the show. 
Variety D, what do you think? How do you feel about loneliness and being alone as someone with disabilities? Yep, um, I can definitely relate, relate to you to an extent. Um, I think I processed before in a couple other episodes, um, but being taken advantage of just because you have um, a disability, but it comes with a benefit called disability living allowance, which is now called PIP. Should be M in there, PIMP, but um, it's not stand for that. But um, so hold yeah, on. It's just that you mean of- your monthly benefits? Because I, I I don't yes. get benefits. So I, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Clarify. For us Americans who don't have the same acronyms, you mean your mother? No, you guys have welfare. It's not. It's not very fair. It's not very it's well. It's not welfare it? over here, though. So no, no. no. But we have a guy called Ben, and he's not really fit, you know, in our pocket. Okay. Not you, okay. Ben. So I'm talking about um the benefit system. Um, so it's really people think it's something like to to lean on, like a mattress. You know, if um if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you climb up, and then you fall back down. You go, oh, you know, I tried, and he's laying your benefits. No, that that mentality needs to go away. But as a disabled person, when being judged upon day in, day out, even culturally, like I think I said it before as well, being Guyanese, Jamaican and Cockney, I wouldn't say um, English or British. I've got to be specific because I'm representing the working class. There's so much ignorance. I'm not saying the, um, the middle class and the aristocrats don't, but from where I'm from in the hearts of South London, ignorance left right and center you have to try and explain and over you know it's just ah oh, it's too much and then you're trying to connect with someone else but they're they're disconnecting for some reason it can be many many things one that they feel a bit intimidated i don't know put my personality or two they try to understand but it's too hard for them it's, it's, it's a mission but it's not a mission to, to just just go over there you need permission don't get me wrong but it's not a mission to go over there go down there eat it up and you know there we go get some sleep and yeah but it's not easy for some people it's it's simple but it's not easy that's the that's the saying i used to say many years ago and it's it's, it's still ain't but at least we're being more aware of it which we free sent a campaign video but yeah it we're more aware of that of these circumstances but it's just that People who don't have disabilities, especially parents of a child or a teenager who has a disability, I know they worry about their children being lonely, being misunderstood. It's like my, me and my brother, um, I've got two brothers who are autistic. My brother who's 23, um, DJ from, um, from AIR, Autistic Intelligent Revolution. Uh, we were talking about um, being misunderstood in the hood. Um, we, I remember, remember writing a script about that a long time ago. I need to find it. But it's true because where we used to live, a borough called Lambeth, it's still, um, I think it's a bit, it's a little bit worse than where I'm, where I'm living now in Croydon. It's, um, it's literally just don't tell no one that you're disabled until after you succeed, succeeded in something in our community. It's, 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 that, it's really that, it's that bad. And when it comes to dating someone within the community or even um, without without our community, it's still hard because that's another it's another obstacle. So you gotta kind of be like a Paralympian champion. I got a swing that in there. Yeah. So it's tough. It's this if 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 you haven't watched Paralympics, think of gladiators but disabled gladiators. Think of that and disabled content uh, contestant. And Wolfman yeah. has only one teeth here and probably not in there. Yeah, just. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's it hard. is. It is. I get it. But someone's got to say something. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it's about who to talk to, who to trust. Hey, I think that's why we need to start going to more AA meetings, whether you drink or not. Just go in and be like, I'm Variety D. I have autism. I, I have a hard time I'm meeting good. people. I have two autistic brothers. I didn't. I I wasn't saying she had autism. I was just joking. Okay. That that Jesus Christ! I should. The role play got to. You're not good at role play, are you? Or maybe you're. Keen I am. Oh my god! How dare you? Did I just open a can you? of worms? 
Did I just open a can of worms? I think I opened two. Yeah, you opened a kind of dildos. How are you going to oh. be so oh, oh, okay. Yep, yep. You're out of here. Next, 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 <laughs> next, next. We got BDSM Bear and Potato Yay. Chicken Susie. What do you got for us, Sunshine? Oh, uh, this is more uplifting, I guess. The mood's about to change real quick up in here. Um, I have been successfully single for the past four months. Usually, the longest time I've been single is two months. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna break that record. Let's go for four. Let's make it five. Let's make it eight. Let's go a year. Let's see what happens. I am gonna uh, celebrate that. Woo! Yeah, because like, so my two year relationship ended in May, and like the normal response to that is like sadness, you know. Um, but after that first week, I was like, I don't feel sad, but I feel like I should. So it feels weird. To be, I feel like Austin Powers um, in the scene where he's like, you know what this means? I'm single again. Um, it's where it's. It feels like it's socially acceptable for dudes to feel that way and be like, yes, on to the next bitch. Feels that way. It's like, oh my gosh, what a hope. So it's like I can't tell anyone that I'm like happy that this ended because I don't wake up in the morning wondering like is the relationship going to end today or am I going to fight for it? Or like, what's get, what's going to happen? Why am I so anxious? And then it's like, Oh, it's one last thing to worry about. But because I'm such a serial dater, it's like, okay, what do I do now? And then I was like, okay, I have to force myself to work on self-improvement. I have to do all these, I have all these steps I want to take. And then um, recently I got back into tap dancing and my mom pointed out and she's like, well, now that you don't have boyfriend, you have time to do that. And then that's when I realized the void in my life that I feel like I've been wanting to fill wasn't actually a relationship. It was like dance and activities because um, when I lost my dad, I had to stop tie dancing and I've been doing that all my life. So for that consistent thing to just suddenly come to an end, I didn't really process it very well. And then I realized that like every significant relationship that like I consider to be like my favorite um, has some memory connected with like dance. And every time I like date somebody, it's like, hey, I wanna dance with you. And it's like, oh, it's cause that's the void I'm trying to fill. So now that I've been able to like process that and focus on myself, it's like, okay, I don't feel like I need to fill this void with a person. But if a person is really cool and they want to just like be part of my life and celebrate me and like actually want me instead of me being like, I want you, but it's unrequited. Like, I feel like I don't feel the need to chase the love and the empty and feel the emptiness anymore. And it's really nice. And I think it's okay to feel that way sometimes. And then sometimes, you know, the void comes back and it's like, hey, remember that time you used to love somebody and it was romantic and cute? You don't have that anymore. Now you're alone at night. And then it's like, oh, that's sad. But I think I, I try like to like- I like humble brag there. Like I felt the humble brag and I was like, bitch, <laughs> fuck you. I'm still chasing, chasing somebody to love me I know. Uh, whatever fine but i want to i want to i think i think it's valid to feel both ways because like i feel like society pushes this narrative that like you have to be with somebody or you're gonna be sad but like it's okay to not be with somebody both it is okay. pushes, pushes the other you know what i mean and that's where i would agree and disagree i feel like the agenda is pushed in both fashions right like sometimes yeah. you feel like I meet some women and some people that are so pushed to the, I don't need a man. I'm an independent woman that I can't even hold the door for you, bitch. Yeah, that's a little extreme. It's like, oh, calm down. You don't have to lash out at somebody for trying to be nice. I hold the door for my guy friends, too, because I'm bigger than them. And they're my bitches, too. It's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mood, though. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Not in a bad way, but you know what I mean? Just having fun with it. And and I guess that's where But I also feel like like when you do pursue a relationship, you shouldn't do it just because you want to feel that void. You should do it because you really like that other person and you're like, ah, you're amazing and I want you to be part of my equation. Yeah. I had the I had the uh, girl I was trying to talk to that I felt was uh, she was an alcoholic and had some issues. 
and was abused like verbally abusive and i was like oh mom that's you okay that's what it is are you gonna burn me with a cigarette too <laughs> oh! damn that's a callback to the new joke hey, that's a callback that was pretty funny what'd you say emma I said she probably will, so I would run. If not, she'll burn you another way, Dante. Oh, I got rid of her a long time ago. It was Lulu. But, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the... Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like, you're a mess, and then you bring that into your next relationship, and then you're like, ah, why didn't that work out? Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, it was called insanity. Well, up next, we're going to go with uh, the chick with blue glasses. Yes. Woo! That is on? me. Well, I'm just like so happy with what you guys have all said because I can relate to all of it. So I've got like, I've got um, two points that I wanted to make. And the first one was just, well, just mirroring what Dante said. So that he, your experience is not that dissimilar to my own. Homeless at 17, abused prior to that for, you know, 14 years. And it continued on. So I can I can relate to that, and so I don't have family for that reason because they're the cause of uh, my mental illness that I live with uh, because of the trauma. So my disability was created by people that should have um, cared about me. So I can relate to the lack of family, and yeah, that is kind of like my experience as well. Is like having to just go through the whole thing because I don't have anybody who's known me since you know, all my life either in my life. So I can totally relate to that. And that's one of the things that I have found a challenge to bring it now into point two about the dating world is like having to go through all of that. Like, um, so I used to be very private about, I wouldn't open up to people about these things or talk about my mental health or anything like that. And then obviously I created Blue Glasses Girl and that's why I'm here now and went full 360 and just decided like, I've no shame attached to the reasons why I am as I am. You know, I didn't do it to myself. Um, I have got, you know, a disability. I've got mental illnesses and it's just who I am and it's my identity. And if people can't accept that, then that's their issue. Um, and part of that growth was I was in a long-term relationship for many, many years. And one of the things that I distinctly remember, and I think there's a lot of people that can relate to this experience is, when you're in a long-term relationship and you think it's going to be like the forever relationship kind of thing, you think you kind of idolize it and think that it's everything. And it took me a long time to get myself out of that relationship because of that. And the thing that triggered me finally getting out of it was the feeling of loneliness because something happened where I just suddenly realized I was so lonely whilst in a relationship and I hear a lot of people saying that mm -hmm. and it's kind of really untalked about isn't it the fact that you can be in this supposed you know from the outside world looks like the perfect relationship 2.4 family unit or whatever your idea of perfection is do you get what I mean you've got this loving supposed loving partner next to you but actually if you're not in a healthy dynamic if you're not loving on each other there is actually nothing lonelier than I've experienced than that yeah. feeling. Because if I'm on my own and I feel lonely, then that's fine because I'm actually on my own at the moment. Not doesn't mean I haven't got anyone, but I am actually on my own dealing with my own feelings. And that gives me a really, you know, so when I've had the bad periods, when I've felt suicidal, when I've been at my worst and I've had to reach out for help because I'm on my own. So that's fair enough. I don't have the family, I don't have the spot. So I'm reaching out and that's a great thing to do. But how about when you're actually in a relationship with somebody who's telling you they love you and they're not there for you? Mm. There's nothing lonelier in my book than that. And it's funny you say that. And uh, actually, and it switched. I was supposed to add, not replace. And I hit it at the right time. I guess I'm almost like, perfect, because I was done. Fuck him. Um, <laughs> what was that? happened to me when my mom died? I, I like. I found out that my wife and her family like had nothing to do with me and my wife really didn't care. And that hurt. Like not just to lose your mom, but then to look over and be like, who the fuck am I sleeping with? Exactly. That's the worst feeling in the world, don't you? When you turn to the person next to you and you, and you just realize, don't you, that and they that's... really don't give a shit. Well, no, there's some of the things I went through not seeing my kids going through court, like you could hate somebody, but 
there's no way I'm that that guy or that dad or that scary, right? Or that, you know what I mean? And so, like, it, it, it you'd be, I know Audra knows a little bit, I know Jane knows a little bit just from being around me that there's no repercussion or karma for the disloyalty you show to somebody when you have that much ability and trust put into you. Ooh. And you know, and you know the thing you were I saying about when you, you saw that woman and you were like, she's like my mother. I did the same thing with the partner I was with. That is exactly what happened. It was repeating the same trauma, the same dynamics, but because they were male, I was like, well, I can't be repeating it because they're not female, but that's the mistake you make, you see. But it's so still repeat, the same love. Yeah, it's still the exactly, same. Exactly, it's love. still the same toxic situation was, it's not genuine love so i'm on this vacation with this chick and she's drunk and i'm it's like 2 30 and we're driving the fucking the oregon coast why are you drunk you know what i mean like there's no reason to be fucking drunk I'm just acting horrible and she looks over and goes i'm drunk you know that's how i am you only like me when i'm sober and i i i, I choked up I was like mom like my mom would do the same thing and be drunk at noon at my fucking baseball game and I'd be embarrassed because my mom's drunk in the fucking stands and I tell her to shut up during the third inning and now she's got a fucking attitude and now I can't even play baseball because I'm distracted about my mom and her attitude and the bus ride home because we don't drive remember and ooh, it just got dark I'm only crying once an episode we've never done two right we've never done two are we going for a record right ah! But those are the those are the patterns. And then there was also somebody who told me that like when I this happened and I was crying, talked to somebody about it, and they're like, dude, do you know how much growth and balls it takes to know that? Mm, like, you're not exactly like seven that. years mm, exactly in this that. kick. You hit less than 90 days and you said, Okay, red flag, red flag. Yeah, I'm closing the door on it. No more red flags. Most people go, nah, I, I want another dozen red flags. I'm not sure. <laughs> and and you know what jane was saying i was just gonna i was just gonna say jane's like no fuck red flags all i take is green flags that's it i love that i loved what jane said about finding uh, yourself because that was the thing when i then left that relationship and became blue glasses girl and decided to be me and my identity that's how i got to this point of being it's okay to be happy on your own yeah i love focus on you successfully single i've never heard that and i love it and the thing is that's why i'm here on the podcast that dante created i wouldn't be here jane i wouldn't have this courage to come out and speak about who i am my identity talk publicly about these things if if i had got out of that relationship and gone dancing i did dancing for two years it helped so much and just found who I was, did loads of activities, was single, and I'm still single, and I'm still living my life, and you don't have to, you know, be with somebody to feel fulfilled, you just don't, it's just a myth. Yes. That's only because exactly. I have They're it. supposed yeah. to there, there are some fun parts to being single, too. Hey, hey. She's only single because I haven't got over there yet. Don't let her lie to you, okay? <laughs> oh, my I internet. Some, I, I said to someone today, if they don't add value, don't add them to your life. Simple as that. Exactly. I explained to my ex that like he's more pleasant when he's high and like not pleasant when he's not high. And I was like, that's a red flag that I'm just like blatantly ignoring. Why, <laughs> yeah. why am I ignoring that? <laughs> Yikes. Hello. Well, up next we've got Audra. What do you think, Sunshine? Yes. It's your turn, Octopussy. <laughs> All right. So I took this a little different uh direction um i'm gonna try to make this through this segment without crying <laughs> you got this <laughs> something happened recently and i'm not going to go into details but something happened recently that made me reflect a little more on this and honestly i think neurodivergence like compart can compartmentalize love in different ways or define it in different ways so at least for me in my in my head and the way I see it and there's like romantic love you know plutonic love and friendship love and then you have family love right 
And I, I thought I had experienced loneliness because I don't, I guess I, I'm what they call demi romantic. I don't make connections with people that often. And so when I do make a connection, like it's great, it's a bonus for me. If I don't have it, then yeah, it's sad, but I am reminded about how much I am loved by other people in this world. Aww. So I okay. guess I thought about the good part about it because I, I am so grateful that I technically am not alone. I am never alone. I, I may lose my parents someday, but I, I have to remember that I still have uh, a lot of people here. We're here for you. We do have a new dating with disabilities record. First time suit man's not the only one crying on the show. So I appreciate that. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. No. The worst part is, is I had to be the asshole last week and, and tell them that is that hey, you're only crying because you had a loving parent. Imagine crying because you had a non-loving parent. That's even funner. No. <laughs> Fuck. I'm an asshole. I'm, there's a reason why I'm made. I'm made for these moments. I'm made. I'm made to be the guy who just says the things you don't want to hear when they need to be said. Find you one of those and only call them when you know you're at your darkest moments. Because on your regular days, you don't need my asshole comments. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of truth on my regular day. Don't ask for one of my comments. It's going to be like, you're a fucking asshole. Then you're going to hate me. But when you really need an asshole comment, like somebody to kick you in the balls, and then call me. That's. I just thought about it. I only get calls when people need to get kicked in the balls. Is that that? That's why, isn't it? Blue glasses, girl Friday. That should be your new t shirt. <laughs> really? Benny, do you want to talk about this? He only wanted to talk about the fun one. What does he got? Let's see what he says. What do you got, Benny? You want to unmute? Yeah, he is unmuted. Oh, no, he's not. He's got to unmute himself. There we go. What you got, Ben? I, I've listened to everyone, and I think everyone's got the same similar views that, yes, loneliness can be lonely, but sometimes it's the best medicine. In some cases, it makes you who you are today. Hey, it's made me for who I am today. Um, I'm not ready to love anyone until I respect myself. Um, so if it means I'm going to be lonely for another 20 years, then that is my sentence. Um, but yeah, loneliness is hard. But my advice to anyone listening, um, join loads of disabled groups or non-disabled groups make as many friends as you can because fucking dating on the dating website is fucking shit <laughs> you need to meet real people or come on dating with disability go to Superman production and Great. email us and let us hear some of your stories and <laughs> give me a break from next month and bring someone else on so that's me shouting out goodbye
Did he, he's leaving forever. Or he just oh, that was his on his. I never know with him. He's so succinct. I love it. He sobered up a little bit. Give it up for Betty, everybody. And I love Betty. Good to get to talk about this as a as a crew post show, but I I'm glad he brought it up. Anyways, that's actually going to be our new format. Is we're going to start bringing on other people with disabilities. That way we can talk about other disabilities other than our six, and then we'll only have one topic, but then we'll dive into something new and hear about other things and other issues and and get other representation. So that's actually in the works. So thanks for spilling the beans, Benny. Thanks for stealing my thunder. But yes, we're going to start having guests. Start talking about wheelchair sex and shit. You know what I mean? Like, what's up? Yes. Hey, new new uh nublove.com, right? Is that Sorry, I've woke up wheelchair sex. Oh fuck, Benny. That's back quite to interesting. <laughs> when is that, that next now. month? Is that next month? Yeah, we'll figure oh, it out. We'll figure yet. it out, buddy. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and I got him no, I think thing. we should do next. He's month. like wheelchair sex. I'll I that. We could do that yes, right yes. now. He's like, I'll bang you out. I right could now, tell you think. some stuff. He's acting like he might impreg me, Nate, me. Shit. I think he's jumping to the next topic. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's what we're getting into. So, and and the funny part is, is you could talk about this with your next topic. Is there a wheelchair sex lady that has an OnlyFans page yet? Our next topic, Benny. That doesn't mean I'm actually. Answer. Stop it! Stop it! You <laughs> son of a bitch. Actually, you know what? I'm going to let him go first since he wants to talk yes. and it's birthday that way he can get back to his drinking. Go ahead, Benny. How do you feel about OnlyFans? You're up, buddy. Just remind me what OnlyFans is. Oh, fuck. Just remind it's, me what It's the only... thing you pay. It's like a private porn site with people. Oh, I don't do that. Ah, actually... Yes, I have done that. <laughs> which, which one? Which one? And it's a fucking ripple. Of course, it don't is. do it. <laughs> do not do it. Do not. If you want to sell yourself to the devil, then fucking do it. But I can tell you from Benny, shake things up. It isn't worth it. I've had to come away from my house to have respite because it's made me depressed. So don't do it, guys. <laughs> You're better than that. We might be broken and disabled, but I'm telling you from Benny Shade, you are lovely, and someone out there will love you back. You just need to get the fuck out of your houses and socialise. I know it's hard because, trust me, without my comedy wife, I would still be stuck at home. But don't tell him because they get a big head. But without Mark Nichols and without these lot, I wouldn't be going around the country now socialising. Don't worry, Blue Glasses, I'm coming to your town soon. So don't worry about that. We've got a, a friend day. Um, so that's me talk pal. <laughs> and do you mind if I fuck off? Go fuck but, off for your birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, Betty. Love you, Rose. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. It's <laughs> eight o'clock, so fuck off. It's later. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. He's gone that fast. <laughs> 
I'm surprised he only got halfway through the six pack. But that might be because he drank the first half before we started, right? And then, you know, it's, I, I'll go second. Because I think I probably have the, the lowest opinion or experience with this in any fashion or form. Because I don't think, and there's two reasons why I say that. Um, I think men's opinion, fuck. I'm being a fucking, I'm turning into a fucking feminist. This sucks. And what I mean by that is I'm growing up. Right? I'm, no. I'm finally seeing it's working. It's, it's working, working everyone. Right? I'm turning into a good guy. Yes, thank goodness. Much like, Ooh, birthday, yeah. cake. Much like birth control, much like abortion, much like prostitution. Men shouldn't be talking about things that don't really involve them. And what I mean, mm-hmm. don't involve their bodies. I mm-hmm. was just gonna get yes. there. We're the consumer. Yeah. Men are not being consumed on OnlyFans. Fourteen-year-old boys aren't being having pictures of them spread on OnlyFans, right? Now it does happen a little bit younger, and that's even creepier. That's a different thing, right? Child stuff. But I, what I'm getting at is, it's women and young girls' bodies that are being objectified and, and paid for on these services. And the biggest thing that that was scary or a red flag or trigger warning or might let you know you're a creep is okay you subscribe to your coffee stamps girls only fans and you think that's cool because you're giving her 30 bucks a month or 40 bucks a month and then i guess you can pay for private shows i don't really know how this shit works i'm not gonna lie to you but i kind of know Because unfortunately, when I started my day, I got a message from some chick on Skype trying to get me to go to her fucking webcam. And I was, yeah, I knew this was some sort of message. Great, cool, not happening, right? But that's the whole idea. And when you do that, well, you may be putting money in her pocket. You're letting her think that you being a creep is okay because you're monetizing it. And then one day there's a guy that she's letting be a creep because he's monetizing it. And he's the guy that ends up killing me. And you feel bad about that coffee waitress when you could have gave her the same $20 tip if that's what you wanted to do. Or you could have brought her a gift card to the toy store because you know she has a son at holidays instead of having her take her out on that sleazy date to slide her a $100 bill for a hand job. Like there's a, <laughs> there's a whole lot more things you can do. And I can honestly say I do not watch porn. I've never bought a prostitute. I've never been to say what? Never been to a strip club. Mm-mm. Yeah. I don't objectify women in that manner. And so OnlyFans for me personally was not only like a huge turnoff, but it was just something that I knew was gross. And the and the, the point I was making is I knew it was bad. When the day that the bad baby bitch, the girl that said, cash me outside, girl. The I girl can't who, stand her. I want to fight her. I don't care. So, cash me outside. But let me explain How this about that? How about some? Listen yeah, first, Variety D, so I can get to my good point, because this was huge. Go for it. The day she turned 18, she made a million dollars on OnlyFans. The day. Not the week after, not the month, not even the day. We're talking within like three or four hours of her account opening. Couple of hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this, hun, Yeah. That's where it took me. And then not only that, but I don't like porn. I don't like the idea of strippers. I don't like the idea of any of that. Because if I can't have it why would i pay to look at it like i grew up poor i didn't go window shopping for food when i was horny and go look at somebody eating a mcdonald's sandwich like we don't like i don't that's 
I think I just wrote a good joke. I, I don't get porn because I'm a fat guy and I don't go watch guy, people eat food when I'm hungry. Like that's, <laughs> that's a good analogy, isn't it? Like I'm writing that down as we speak. Like that's, that's my new joke. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm so fucking hungry. Yeah, but I don't want to cook. So I'm going to go sit outside with Chris and so watch somebody eat a T-bone. Yeah. Ooh, do you know what I want to do right now since I'm so hungry? Oh, my God. I want to watch somebody eat the best lasagna in the world. Yeah, that'll say... That'll make me feel so much better. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, that'll make me feel so much better. No! I'm not doing any of that fucking shit. I'm going to be hungrier. And no. Jacking off to Pamela Anderson doesn't really consume or solve me. Because I'm never going to get to bang Pamela Anderson. So, only fans, I'm good. If you want me to see you naked, and you want me to pay for it, then be my girlfriend. Fuck me good, and tell me to bring home some ones. And after dinner, I get a little show. And I'll sit there like the good little boy I am, and pay my tip. Thank you. All right. Emma, what did you think? <laughs> well, um, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, I suppose I'm going to have to, because it's just in my nature, isn't it, offer the counter arguments to this, right? Like, not that I disagree, really, obviously, with what, because everybody's entitled to their own views, but... Um, the way I heard about OnlyFans, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know fully what it was, but I saw something in the media about sex workers, and there was some change to some policy and how it was going to affect OnlyFans accounts, and that's when I realised it was mainly used for, uh, you know, for pornography purposes, and um, and and sex workers being, of course, of all different genders. But as you're saying, predominantly a lot of women using uh, um, the, the accounts. I suppose for me, it goes back to like when we talked about the topic of pornography. And for me, it goes hand in hand with exploitation. That's not saying every person is being exploited. So I just want to say if somebody chooses to be a sex worker and that is their choice of profession and they want to do that and they want to do that safely and OnlyFans is their way to do that. If it's, if it's their choice, then it, I'm happy with that, right? My issue comes down to exploitation, but I guess the interesting thing about OnlyFans is who's exploiting who, yeah? Because when I looked on YouTube to find out a bit more about like what this OnlyFans account was, it was interesting because somebody commented on a comment, which did really make me giggle, which says it's for only for simps. Now, if you don't know what a simps is, it's guys who are extremely submissive to women. So it's a bit of an in-joke to say, you know, that simps, you know, a guy is a simp, basically, somebody who chases after, you know, the female. Now, if that's the case with OnlyFans, then women are actually taking back control, aren't they? And they're choosing to exploit, yeah, potentially a bigger male audience simps and, and, earn the, and earn this money right now the only thing that concerns me about this is number one there's a lot of simps to be exploited by the look of it <laughs> right and the problem with that is we're creating a division like you say that young woman who earned a million pounds now we're getting young people then to aspire to become millionaires by commodifying their bodies and their bodies are becoming a consumer product to sell you know, so I've got a feeling about that because <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that as a woman, whether I think my body's a product to sell. I really don't feel comfortable with that. And then, and that's me personally. And obviously there's loads of people that do feel comfortable with that and go for them. You know, that's brilliant, you know, that they're, they're, they're doing it in that way. My only concern is it's going to create a division based on financial security. So people who are comfortable either selling their bodies, either by having live sex or by exposing their bodies or sharing images or videos or whatever it is that they do applying some fetishes we've talked about fetishes before i know there's a big fetish community i should imagine on the only fans 
whatever it is they're doing, I guess the thing is, they're going to get into a position of financial security, which is then going to leave other young women and other young men and other women thinking, hang on, I'm not a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? And is that going to force them into these commercialised structures? Do you know what I mean? As time goes on, are more and more people going to have to do this as a means to generate an income? And that worries me because at the minute they're saying, oh, it's just the gig economy. It's like a little side gig. You know, you can just earn it. But it's not really, is it? Because I think these OnlyFans people are quite serious. I looked on the video and it said you have to do one video a day. You have to have people on subscription. And one video doesn't sound that much, but then you've got to do private videos as well. I'm sorry, but it sounds like a full-time job to me. You know what I mean? So these people are clearly working hard on these accounts to get themselves into a status. So I'm not sure how I feel about social media content now becoming about the commercialization of people's bodies. And worse than that, not only the commercialization, but the sexualization, you know, so they've got to, they've got to up the ante to make more money. So it could go from showing an image of themselves with clothes on to not clothes on, to then having sex, to then maybe even getting involved in some sexual activity that they, they don't even enjoy in real life just because it's going to get the ratings, it's going to get the views, or it's going to be like extreme content. And so who's exploiting who is what I would say is my end point on that all. <laughs> hey, I'm with you, I agree. And at some point, you know, it's the, like I remember everybody always is, is tripped out on how I didn't watch South Park. And I was like, well, I watched The Simpsons. And I felt the Simpsons were so far left that if there was something past that, I didn't need it. Like the Simpsons was so radical and out there and, and pushing the envelope enough for me and my, yeah, mind. definitely don't watch South Park then. Don't <laughs> no, I, I get, I've seen, I've seen it, but I've never watched a whole episode of just, you know what I mean? And, and that's where like and 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 I'd take this one step further. I'm gonna take this political for a second. Before Joe Biden, our last two presidents meant so much for the same reasons that OnlyFans mean so much. Because our black president proved to every black person out there, variety D included, that when your mama said you could be anything you wanted, and I want you to unmute for this variety D, because you know what I'm about to say. As a kid, your mama be right. like, you could be anything you want, and you could say, but president, am I lying, D? Yeah, same as well. We're still having him. Your mama still would having say him. that, and we'd be, you yeah. could do anything you want, but be president, baby. Yeah. That's now. why I had that joke back in the day before Barack Obama, well, sorry, during Barack Obama was in power, I said, oh, it's funny how America got a black man through a white door, um, and we got a white man. No, so we got a white man for a black door, ten down the street, and America's got a black man from white to a white house. We're very slow. We're we're way behind you guys. Yeah, bingo. And so, but you see then what I'm saying? so that's that. I got to say that joke a long time ago, about eight nine years ago. Yeah. But that's the prime example of one side of how only yes, fans can be good, elders. right? Is that yeah. hey now you've got somebody who made a million dollars off of OnlyFans? Great, cool. That mm -hmm. one person, it's great for. And then our next yeah. president was Donald Trump. Orange man. I see that's that's a whole and, different story. Hold, exactly. And what did he embrace? <laughs> Shit Greed. that was bad. And so you look at OnlyFans, and if it's in bricks, honestly, this could be quite empowering. Only if we haven't talked about it, but it could be quite empowering for the one-legged girl who's now getting people to finally find her. And she's getting her full $15. Because mm. I don't know if they get all the money or all that, right? Um, but it's one of those where, you know what I mean, Is it, it just all depends. And then yeah. the other part of it is, is there's going to be that one person who does need it, who does make money, who is now making an income. And so... Uh as a man i think and uh, i'm gonna stand on this again maybe mansplaining i think it's not up to us to judge only fans and i think that's gonna be the biggest thing that i want the male listeners to hear 
And then the women, as usual, stop bashing each other just to feel better about yourself. If a basic bitch got to make money on OnlyFans, well, at least your ass ain't basic. Stop talking about her. <laughs> Audra, let's get you up and out. You look glazed over like a donut. Not in a good way. <laughs> I don't mean that good glazed like, ooh, I'm glazed. You're just like, oh, fuck. No. Let me get this through this. Yeah. Um, I don't really have much of an opinion on this just because... I guess I'm older. I don't have a lot of experience with it. Uh, I had to do a little research myself, you know, like blue glasses girl here. Um, I, I'm all for it. I, I think it's great. If it's almost kind of like a work from home situation, you know, like remote learning. It's like the sex workers got to bring their work home, I guess. So COVID friendly. Um, I, I, the only concern I have for obvious reasons is the same exploitation is it going to move in the wrong direction um because you know there's going to be that one asshole out there who's going to do it and ruin it for the people who are actually using it because they need it or they want it or like dante said making a living from it because that's what they can do um and again i am pro sex work you know like if that is you're an adult you can make that choice and that is your decision you know, but again, I just don't want it to become where, okay, we prime them when they're teenagers. So that way, when they turn 18, they immediately, you know, like in that other case, make that million. And again, that's priming them when they're younger and then becoming an adult just because they're of age. So uh, yeah, brainwashing, I guess, is another term for it. Uh but yeah, other than uh, that, I, not, that's it. It's not just brainwashing. I think the term is grooming. Grooming. Yeah, that's just the other gonna term say word. grooming is about yeah. 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 I mean, the thing is as well, imagine being an 18-year-old young woman with a million pound. I mean, who needs that level of responsibility? Think about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is the society <laughs> we're in where money. <laughs> Money and fame are like the only way. You know what I mean? Like you've got to have money, you've got to have fame, but nobody ever stops to think, hang on, what is it actually like being a famous person getting trolled all the time to the point where a lot of famous people kill or harm themselves and then having a million pounds where you can then access as much drugs and alcohol as you want. I mean, why is this such a positive thing? I'm lost about this. No, I got to say, because I, I, I'm not popular. I'm not a celebrity in any way. I don't want to ever, okay? I'm not that person. However, I do run a group that we have about a thousand members uh, for Washington state. And so I, I do continually get like messages and notifications all the time. And oh my gosh, it is overwhelming sometimes. And I don't read everything. I don't see everything. And because it becomes like, I become inundated with everything. I cannot imagine, and I'm 40. I cannot imagine being 18 and having a million followers and a million pounds That's in it. my bank account and, and trying to deal with that kind of crap. Think about how hard it is as a teenager, right? And there's loads of TikToks and videos about this at the minute, about men approaching just ordinary women in the street, right? Think about how hard it is fending off ordinary male attention and male gaze as a female in society and dealing with all the political stuff as a teenager but now you're putting yourself in a position where you've got millions of people do you know what yep. I mean demanding things of you demanding live videos and content 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 I mean I'm just gonna see the mental health where it just go <laughs> you know yeah yeah and and people just nosedive I'm scared for young people I, I I agree with you completely like I wouldn't want to be a teenager right now I would <laughs> <laughs> You know why? Why? Yes. That means I wouldn't have these 40-year-old knees no more. You know what I'm saying? I want new knees. I knew that was coming. I want new knees. I knew that was coming. You want the bee's knees. I'm the bee's knees. Yay. Please. Up next. We got Variety D. What do you think, Short Stuff? What do we think, Crazy? I don't like Short Star. I swear this. I like longer. Um, but um, oh, <laughs> I just, I just want to give a shout out yeah, to um, disabled Ariel, uh, Gimpy, uh, was it Gimpy Gal? Uh, spelled G A L, and then Morgan C. Uh, they are the three top disabled only fans. Um, uh, people doing their thing and getting money. 
Yes. So, um, but the, the 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 biggest one has to be disabled area at the moment because she she's just doing her thing. She even got everything on Twitter saying follow me on there. But I know a British one who's non-disabled called Michelle Thorne. Um, and she's actually, she's a porn star for I think, about 20 years. Um, reason I know that because in South London, we have this thing called cable and wireless, well had it, and it was a bootleg. So when Disney Channel finish, something else comes on after. And when Fox Kids finish, <laughs> this bunny called Playboy comes on after as well. So I know some of these people's names. So as I got older, I'm walking in the city in central London. I'm walking past porn and going, wait a minute, that's Benjamin. Oh my God, bend over. Right. You know, like, so it's really, it's mad. But, but um, seeing this OnlyFans page thing, I'm not part of it. I just know about it because obviously comedians, we have to know everything because you have to keep up with the audience. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, everyone has a choice that like everyone's body is their temple. That Remember I said in the previous show, I said, um, shout out to the um, disabled um, porn stars back in the seventies. Because they were making a movement, they were paving the way, as they say. So I see it differently. But when it comes to um, freaking bad Barbie, I can't stand that. Even when she was on Dr. Phil, yeah, I was like, she needs a punch in the mouth. I can't stand the the girl. She was like, what, fifteen when she was on there or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, 15, yeah, yeah, I'm like that. Yeah, I look like she's repping the bloods. Yeah, with her red hair. I, I think so. <sighs> Sorry to say this, but she was a pale, stale white chick with red hair who needs to brush her teeth. Or if not, I can box her teeth out in her mouth. I can get a couple of friends from the East End, Papa Cockney girls and guys. Well, I don't want guys to hear her, but, you know, just tell about herself. I mean, no, no. But it's just um, $1 million. But you've got to remember, she's a rapper as well. She, before OnlyFans, she's been rapping too. So, And her family rapping. are not to be trusted because her mum... Was one that bought, got onto the, um, got onto Doctor Phil to say she needed help being a better mum, and I can't um, handle her. Where's your Where's your sisters if you have any? Where's your your friends um, over here? Call me old fashioned, but we have a community where we can go to laundry and say, "Hey, Vera, you know what? my daughter's messing around. You know, come have a word. You know something like don't you guys have that in America? I swear you have like shops or liquor stores we can call someone and say, "Hey, you know what?" Is that my child messing around? All right, okay. Here is some um, some slippers. You can go and like beat her about ten times and bring her home. No nope. killer. That doesn't beat happen her. here. What? Ah, American. Nope. Why you love, you love guns? Just the thing is probably you guys look like guns. You see, we are we are independent freedom fighters, I guess, who want nothing to do with each other. <laughs> you know, no one's kids, man. No one's else with them kids and just like we're a disaster. Back. That's what we are. Yeah, That's like it's disaster. a totally different culture. We like back in the day, they used to like have like get the parents and say to the policeman, just give them a clip around the head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Get the ears. Get the policeman just yeah. walk up to you, know, whack you on the head. Do you know what I mean? They'd be like, get home. You know what I mean? They'd be that kind of thing. Yeah, and they don't care if you're disabled. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, kind of thing. And they some gone. So, like with this OnlyFans thing, yeah, there has to be, well, I think there is a restriction. However, it's not just limited to porn stars or pornography. It, it's people who have, like, I don't know, a big fan of toes. You know what I mean? They'll say, yeah, look at toes yeah. for five minutes. And then you get paid 5,000. I'm like, wow. But what yeah. I don't like is um, it's the 20, 20%. You have to give the commission to the founders of OnlyFans. And I'm thinking, you guys are making money already. Like, no, nah, man. <laughs> at, least, at least a bit shorter than that, because that's, that's, that's more than a than when you're booked from an agent. That's that's more, yeah. So a bit and the owners and the owners are white man. Just to point that out. I know, I know they are. So what's twenty percent of a million pound off that he's got off Danielle Puswinski? Do you know what I mean? Two hundred mm. grand. Two hundred exactly. Grand. Just on one woman. You know what I mean? Not by Being going there. Good. But look how many. I mean, I don't know what the question is. I haven't, I haven't done research yet. But there must be at least come up to a million people on OnlyFans getting paid, you know, a substantial amount. And imagine that percentage all just, here's, just here's, gathered here's, up. Here's my biggest thing is there's too much money to be made off of this without OnlyFans donating to the Lost Women of America Fund or to be donating to exactly the victims of rape or, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's kind of like the whole idea like when you do GoFundMe you lose like 15% yeah that's, I, don't, I don't like GoFundMe and um, 
I'm yeah. glad you said that about when it comes to um, what's it called when you do something for for a good cause. Someone has done that on OnlyFans and um, done it for the. I'm not people. talking about the OnlyFan account. I'm talking about OnlyFan. So, yeah, the fans themselves. themselves. Yeah. Yes, not the actual account. You know, that's a different story because they it goes back to connecting with the loneliness. They're so lonely that they spend their money on watching titties. No, 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 no. Someone. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the only fan company. So Tim oh, Tim Stokely currently 2021, his current net worth is worth 163 million dollars. Give me that cash. I no. think you should give it to Texas for abortions. Exactly. We have CNN here in, in Britain too. So, um, no, it's just like, it's too much. I think this, the numbers game is getting more fierce, if that makes sense. No matter if you're disabled or not, it's all a numbers game. But it's like, how much would you push things further? And um, not a limit, what is your target as an individual? Because like the three names I've named, they're still on OnlyFans page. And there will be a restriction on the 1st of October, which ironically is going to be Black History Month in Britain. So, yeah, it's mad. And even this month is going to be, um, oh, it's going to be emotional for me. I'm not going to cry on it. But um, it's going to be six years since my old man, uh, well, my stepdad passed away. The father of my uh, two brothers are both autistic, um, passed away. So I wonder what he would say if he was alive right now, like... Even if I want to do an OnlyFans page, good God. I wonder what he would say. <laughs> Even though I'm 30, like, nah. <laughs> uh, Variety, you do know that Tim, who set up OnlyFans, is from London. You do know he's from your neck of the woods, so we can blame you entirely oh, now. Oh, he's from Brixton. Well, I don't know if you're aware about this. You need to do some research and find out where he's from. He's from yeah, North but if, I'm from, if he's from Chelsea, I can't go down there. That's I've been in Chelsea. Hey, hey. If I could go, sake. I can go you guys are you are taking, taking the piss out of me. We're not talking about that shit. It's time to move on. Last but not least, we got okay. Bondage Bear and Jane Jira. She said she had something great to contribute. I remember I that thought. earlier. I yes. saved the um, best I actually life. have friends who use OnlyFans. Plot twist. Bet you didn't see that coming. Um, they actually do use it for empowerment and stuff. Um, to because uh -huh. they like love like the way they look and they love their bodies and stuff. And they're like, you know, I'm gonna show it off in like a controlled way and capitalize off of it as like a side gig for a side hustle, which is fantastic. Um, and the thing that people don't really think about when it comes to like putting yourself out there in that way is that like with porn and stuff, like everybody has access to that and you don't know what people are gonna do with that stuff and then they could sell that stuff and then you get nothing out of it whereas with only fans you're the one in control and you decide how much of you that you put out instead of somebody else putting you out there which is weird and um yeah you get control over it but people are mad about that because it's like oh no how dare women be able to do this thing with their bodies and benefit from it we can't have that all of a sudden um but i do think that like it should be for like 21 and up and like adult adults because it's weird for an 18 year old to be into that that's, that's not right that's not right also side note um bad baby she actually talked about how um when she was on the Dr. Phil's show and stuff, they sent her away to this like really sketchy farm camp where somebody died. So yeah, look into that. That's not good. Paris Hilton got sent to that one, didn't she? That's what she did to the court case over. It's a similar yeah. thing. I did them places. That is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think that like, uh, do you think that there should be more focus on making OnlyFans like safe and stuff and putting that restriction on it? And it would be nice if we can donate hella money to good causes. Like oh, I wish that we could turn it into a good thing instead of focusing on like bashing it or finding ways to like break it and take advantage of it. Like, can we just let people empower yeah. themselves in a non-sketchy and kind of safe way and put like, regulation on it and stuff it's good yeah but that, that's like like i said body is your temple but it's just the fact of we live in a technology world a social media world like all of us here in these squares yeah we never thought this was going to happen 10 years ago yeah 
I, I'm suspicious. Like you're saying non spectrum hey, Speak radio, for yourself. But... I've done a lot of acid in my life. I've had some ideas. Okay. Mind your business. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, suit man. Well. <laughs> Call me Sid man. Oh, that was back in the day. L L S D man. No, 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 man. <laughs> Oh, you sure it's not synth, man? Episode. Oh, go ahead, sir. <laughs> well, and then there's also um, something that we all probably didn't think about. Um, boudoir photographers and stuff, like they could probably use OnlyFans for their businesses and things. Um, and then for the listener who don't know, um, boudoir photography is lingerie, but it's like not sexual. It's more like pretty and artistic and you don't show the genitals could they head. though because would somebody want their pictures shared on your only fans it's like a premium and i'm going to end it on this one there's a kid i don't remember what state i don't remember where this is at but it's true okay there's a kid who killed himself because his mother was on only fans hmm. That's things that some people don't think about parents on OnlyFans, and a lot of them are. And the yeah. whole school trolled him over this. Yeah. And there was nothing that could be done because the school couldn't do anything. The yeah. kids did nothing wrong. The content's out there. Mm. And he ended up committing suicide. Mm -mm -mm. And whether or not you think about all these things, no matter how serious and i want to end on this for for a serious note because i i believe in empowering everybody and i believe in empowering women and i believe in empowering moms and my mom's done some horrible things when she was alive to me and did some horrible things to make sure i could get food on my table that i won't speak of right and uh, they sucked right and and at the same point in some cases luckily women still have the ability to use those tools to do what they need to do if they can so we can't take it away from them either, right? But there's got to be a SWOT analysis. There's strengths and weaknesses. The 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 needs got to outweigh the 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 wants of the few. The the pluses of what you're doing have to outweigh the minuses. The fact that you want diamond earrings aren't worth more than the fact that your son's in high school. The fact that you want to go on vineyard trips isn't more important than your kid's mental health. And at the same time, hey, husband, your wife wanting to feel sexy so she can buy you a new boat. It's okay. Hey, hey, boyfriend, your girlfriend pays your fucking rent, you fucking loser. You're lucky she doesn't find somebody like me. Let her have her only fence. Mm-hmm. Right. But there's got to be some sort of standard regulation, safety. And last but not least, let's stop letting rich white people get rich off our culture, no matter how we do it. Because mm -hmm. whether, whether yeah, it's that, Amazon, that Bobby. it's Uber. Exactly. It's Lyft, it's Grubhub, it's Pornhub, it's mm -hmm. internet. the internet has made it easy for anybody to deliver a service for you. But we're finding the people that are getting richest aren't the service providers. Mm -hmm. get those connecting the customers. Jesus, I've been great with my words. Amen. You I have done that. And some coffee. <laughs> some oh, coffee. Yeah. Anyways, I've been Sue Man. Give it up for Octopus. <laughs> Give it up for Variety D. The potato chip enthusiast with Venus and Ben. And Penny, I got too drunk because it's my birthday show. <laughs> Next Saturday, we got Raw Comedy, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. East Coast. And guess what? 
we said this before, but we didn't say this on this show. Dating with disabilities can be heard on 89.5 in Central Oregon from Portland all the way down to Salem every Friday night at 8.30. Yes. Oh, loop there. Yeah, yeah. Right through Oregon, turn on 89.5 radio. Listen to some date and disabilities. If you need some marketing in Oregon, guess what? We reach everywhere. So I'll let you <laughs> productions out, bitches. Yay! Yeah, yeah.